So the premise we're talking about today is that social media and the digital world is just public relations in a different form. Kyle, you were pretty prescient about this five years ago, presentation in uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, and you talked about this. Tell us, tell us what you said then and what you think now. Welcome to the weekly Neo Marketing Podcast, featuring one half of the Golden Group C-Suite, Kyle Golding, and Pritch Pritchard, APR, PRSA Fellow. Kyle, you did a presentation to the PRSA chapter in Little Rock five years ago. Social media and digital being public relations dressed up a little differently. Creativity, innovation, and ahead of the curve is what public relations is actually all about. When you utilize your poor PR principles in new, exciting, and creative ways. They asked me to talk about creativity in, in public relations. Uh, so I started thinking about it. And what I came up with was, and it's funny, the stuff that I talked about at the time was starting to be very trendy and now is very mainstream. Things like content marketing, influencer marketing, inbound marketing, right. et cetera, all the buzzwords that you're hearing if you're doing any kind of marketing communications for business in 2017 were the new, fresh, next big thing. The new kid on the block, yeah. But when you break it down, it's essentially the same practice as public relations. Cross-platform communications is the buzzword in marketing. The same core message conveyed over multiple channels, whether it's in print, web, social media, via video, even mobile, text, and things like this. They're taking the same four or five paragraphs, boilerplate, and just transmitting it in multiple channels. Well, what does that sound like? Four to five paragraphs in a boilerplate? It's a press release. Marketers understand that consistent messaging carries and comes through to the customer, right? You have to convey your message in multiple ways and multiple channels, but it has to have a core consistency. It can't be one message for print, one message for PR, and one message for TV, and one message for et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Because it's diluted. It's not one message. It's five messages or seven messages. And now each of those messages have to touch a consumer 15 times when we're trying to maybe promote a new product or service, fix a negative issue, or do something where we're trying to move public opinion about our client, that we do that by understanding them and writing solid content that connects with the reader. That's what a press release is. That's what marketing now claims is content-based marketing. Solid, well-written, well-thought-out content that makes a connection with the reader. Right? That's a press release. Delivering a good con chunk of content, information, that's not a sales pitch. It's not a call to action. It's not a buy now, but it's informing an audience or uh, get, getting, getting them related to a business through direct communication, but indirect messaging. It's not a hard sell. That's content marketing, but that's also what you do in PR when you're communicating through a press release or an official statement as public relations, that's essentially the same thing as content marketing. Relationship-based marketing. Obviously, everyone in this room understands that PR is about relationships, relationships you create with your client and with your media outlets and resources, with your partners. The way that you get your information to the public is almost always through a relationship. Marketing will tell you that relationship-based marketing is purely social media. There was no relationship-based marketing before social media. Silly, but they say it, right? Of course we understand social media is everything, Facebook, Twitter, all of these things where there's a, a opportunity for a company, a product, a service to create something that's outside of sales cycles. Social media has changed the way that people look at, people they do business with, from everything from buying a hamburger through the house you buy. That opportunity is fantastic and perfect for PR. That's what we do, is create positive impressions of our clients. We tell our client's story the way our client wants it told, and people who now are looking for reasons to do business with someone, whether it's B2B or as a consumer, they now have a reason, because they read it in the paper, they saw it on a website, However, they found out the information that we have put out there that our client 
is one of the good guys. Doing things the right way, transparent, upfront, socially active. These are all things that people say, that's my choice over these other guys who I either know nothing about or I heard something negative about. It's also the quickest way when you do have negative, where you say, you know, this negative thing is out here, but look at all of this that we've been putting out here via all these channels. That's what, at the core, that's PR. When marketing people, again, try to claim that this is some big thing they just invented, the channels are new, and they change daily. But the concept is pure PR. When you utilize creativity, and we've already discussed that when people talk about, these creatives talk about this stuff they're doing, they're just copying us. They're just following <laughs> PR. But when you continue to do what you do, know what you do, stick to your core values and your ethics, and approach it creatively, but sticking to what you know is, is positive communication for your clients, you create opportunity for them. Same thing with influencer marketing. You know, right now you directly go to the influencer. You go to YouTube or Instagram or somewhere and go, hey, celebrity, we'll, we'll pay you X or we'll do this for you. If you'll communicate this message, which is how great your product is or how something makes your life great. Or you can be cool like the, the influencer. But that's what we do in PR. We send out press releases. We, we, we get information into the media that lets people understand a product or service or a, a, an event or a, a situation where they then think, oh, that's what I need in my life. That's influencer marketing. And we've also talked, though, that there's a big relationship piece in this, which in my mind is the heart of public relations. Absolutely. Um, you know, there's the, the difference between marketing, advertising, and public relations, right? Advertising is a one-way conversation. It's, it's standing on a street corner and yelling, I have a car for sale, who wants to buy it? Marketing is the work that you do before advertising, where you, you dial in who your audience is, what the message should be, and what the benefits of doing business with your business is. What are the pros and cons of your product, your service, etc. PR, public relations, is a relationship building. It's a communicating um, information in a non-sales way. Yep. It's relationship building, but it's a two-way conversation. That communication comes back to you if you're listening correctly. That informs your next bit of information. That's what how PR works. That's that's the basis of marketing that you then take in to, and develop advertising from. And then advertising is just a direct call to action right. sales piece. So yes, PR has always been relationship-based. It's always been a two-way conversation. And current marketing, when done correctly, not just marketing, right. but really well executed content marketing, uh, influencer marketing, inbound, push-pull, et cetera, is a two-way conversation, right. and that's the same theory as PR. Well, the promise of social media has always been that engagement, the listening, the relationship building, the two-way conversation. Absolutely. We're still five years on, we're still not doing that very well, are Too we? Too many people go back to the old advertising ideas. They go back to yell, sell, sell, sell enough times, say your phone number enough times in your right. radio spot, which I got where I, I'll, I'll PR turn off the radio spot. If I hear your, your 1-800 number more than four times in a 30 second spot, I will flip the channel. Uh, Forever. People, right, so that's the same people who wrote copy for a radio and right. for TV the same people who have been designing ads and getting paid to place them in publications right. uh, via their media fees are still trying to do that with social media. They're not looking at the long tail advantages of social media, of the relationship building, the two-way conversation, the social listening, etc. But PR professionals like yourself and myself, and I, I barely put that in the conversation. I'm, a, I'm good at PR. You're the master. You're teaching the Young People University how it's done the right way by the book. And your background has got to be telling you right now, what I'm telling you is exactly what you tell your students about PR, yeah. which is conveying factual, correct information. That's the main thing, too. It's not right. a sales spin. Right. But it's spin factual. Spin is a four-letter word, by right. the way. Exactly. Factual information that people need to make an informed decision about buying a product or service or engaging in, in an activity. Um, that's PR. That's what good marketing executed through social media should be as well. And yeah. it's not a direct, I'm going to put something in your face and expect you to drive right down here and pay X number of dollars right. for it. 
relationship over time. Absolutely. Uh, so long-term thinking, patience, and a two-way conversation not focused on today's sale, but tomorrow's relationship that will lead to a sale that is easy to execute because you've communicated, they're informed, they understand. No one ever wants to be sold anything. Right. And we, we need to buy things. We need right. to make purchases. We need to make exchanges. But I don't want to be sold, which is strong arming me into yeah, well, yeah. something I, that isn't necessarily the way I want it to be. I want to engage in a relationship the way I want as a consumer uh, because I'm informed, because I know something about the product, the service, the business, the people, etc. Uh, I'm buying local, I'm buying green, I'm buying organic, whatever, you know, whatever, whatever. my decision making right. process is. Right. And then execute on it because I need it anyway, so I'm going to buy the thing that makes the most sense to me in my lifestyle. That is what people are looking for in modern communication not hard sell twist your arm I'll, I'll knock 50 bucks off the top if you buy today kind of stuff <laughs> right. you know, there's, a reason, there's a reason there's a joke about used car salesmen there's a lot of jokes about used car salesmen because they keep falling into that stereotype exactly so, uh so yes so that's why we call it neo marketing that's right this is the new way of doing marketing but it's traditional ways of doing things just adapted for the future which is now, now. so Things that worked in 1950 can still work today if, if you take you. into account the channels, the audience, and what the audience is looking for. Bam. So there you go, folks. There you go. You don't have to go hire a millennial to do your social media. <laughs> go hire a PR professional. Exactly. Trust me, it'll pay exactly. off in the long run. Well, we, we were talking earlier about pet peeves, <laughs> and I know you've got one. I do have a big one. I have a huge one. Here's my communication pet peeve, folks. Listen to me. If you're doing something that is related to a cause, uh, let's say cancer, you're not raising money for cancer. You're not raising money for Alzheimer's. You're not raising money for heart disease. You're raising money to eliminate these things, to research these things, to help victims of. But don't take the shortcut and say, come to our walk this weekend for cancer. We're not walking for cancer. We're walking to raise money for research, for awareness, etc. So understand how to construct a sentence before you put it out in the world. And if your <laughs> sentence is too long for 140 characters, figure that out. Too. Figure it out. Because it sounds terrible when you say things like the concert for homelessness. Wow. No. <laughs> that is what right. you do like we, you need to have a concert for world peace because you want world peace to happen you right. don't want homelessness to happen right. that's my pet peeve what's there yours you what's yours Pritch? well kind of along the same line it's language i've actually got two the, <laughs> the number one is first annual right I see that it's, all the time yeah. no i'm sorry it's the first it's not annual yet it's until the, the second one it's yes. the inaugural it's the inaugural and then the second annual <laughs> the second it's only annual. annual on the second time <laughs> on the second time exactly and then i'm still angry with the ap style book people when they changed more than after having it pounded into my head and understanding the logic of it to over I, it's it because it's the tongue, the because it's popular because that's what people say all the time. Well, I thought the AP style book was to help us figure out how to say things. Right. And so d- anyway, and direct our audience instead of just taking it the way they are slipping into. Exactly. Well, so those see, are my folks, I told I told you he's the PR master. He he knows and sees all, including changes <laughs> to the AP style guide. That's that's, that's his sad. gig. That's what he does. <laughs> All right, that's that. These are pretty good pet peeves. Though. This is a good conversation. Thank you yeah. for referencing my great talk at the PRSA, uh, Little Rock, Arkansas. Absolutely. Great people had a great time there. We'd love to go back if you guys are watching this uh, from five <laughs> years ago uh, about creativity and PR and how it relates to current content marketing. Uh, the link to that full video will be in the bottom of the YouTube description and on our YouTube or on our podcast channel as well. So go check it out if you are so inclined. Until then, we'll see you next time on the Neo Marketing podcast. Good luck. Ciao.